Many people will know Manuel Oro individually or together as More Design. Um, we're certainly excited to be able to sit down with them today, Patrick and I, and have a chat about some of the past, some of the present, and maybe what's coming up in the future. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a, a massive privilege to sit with you guys in one of your latest projects and uh, speak a little bit more. One of the first things I wanted to say to you both is hello, hi. <laughs> Um, Good to see you guys. <laughs> Good to see it's, you. It's been a while. Oh, it has been a while. Exactly. It has been a while. And I think that's a funny thing. You know, we work closely together, yet because we're both growing businesses and projects and um, we're sort of not often sitting down together and socializing in the way well, we're Well, the world's too quick. To. The world's moving so fast, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and I guess now you've migrated as well to Ibiza. So that's a very interesting introduction, even for us as well. We followed behind you guys a few days later, but, you know, we came yeah, eventually. Yeah, so we're very excited about also emerging all the Ibiza and the new world over there. It's a new crowd, uh, new blood, interesting international folks. So that's fun. Definitely. I think it is fun. I think it's an exciting place. And, and this is where it started for you guys. This is where it started for us. And I'd love to know about how you guys met, where that relationship was back then, how it grew to become more design. And well, we met, we met in Safonda, I think. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, we like met in we, we, um, in the nights, summer nights, and we, among the people that uh, congregated in the bars or in the beach, we all, always had a, a good vibration about the themes that uh, I was studying architecture. He was into design, but Oro had been doing renovations with his mother for for years. No? So we exchanged books, ideas, and actually he was my first client. I was still finishing and he said, I have to do a renovation in Deja. I said, no problem, I can do it. Of course, I could not do it because... <laughs> <laughs> he blanked it. What do you mean? Stone, stone facades. <laughs> uh, but yes, it was the first project we did and uh, I did for him. Uh, and then he continued the project with, with the builder and so on. And uh, when And then I finished, I went to Europe and then Years later, I mean, seeing each other uh, over summer, he told me, he called me and uh, said, look, I have one project in, in Bahamas um, and I'm doing, I'm doing a crazy project on an island that has to be off grid. And I was moving uh, uh, countries and, 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 and offices. I had been working for Herzog uh, in Herzog de Maron in Switzerland. And I was in Madrid and I said, well, let's try. So we, we started working for a few months. I came to, to Deja for family reasons, uh, to work for, uh, to, to live here in a, for a few months permanently. And we started working and then suddenly we got the first project. And I uh, said, why don't we do this one? And we were each one in a, in a house, and we also we we yeah. we had like different spaces. Yeah, but we're working out of our homes. Really good, and it was I mean it was the only project we were doing, Cananita. Uh -huh. uh, that was the first project, and then someone else called us, and and there was, I mean it was a very slow pace, but it was interesting because Oro was mouth. Yeah, and Oro, you were telling time. me all the things about the builders. I mean it was a good way of uh, like. I almost had, we almost had only one project for a year. So you would go walking daily to on site, having the time to sit there and, and, and meet people and, and realize how they did things here. So it was a, it was a great start. What, what year was this, like roughly? When that was 2011. So you guys started yeah. around 2011? Yeah, 2011, yeah. yeah. And I remember Cananita got quite a bit of a buzz around it. I mean, it was in like magazines and yeah. is it that's the, yeah, that was, sort of catapulted you into... It, it was very catchy, you know, yeah. it was kind of like, um, it was a summary of really of our, our handwriting in a sense that it was all very hand kind of manicured. It was houses made by hands and it was the very beginning of experimenting with craftsmanship and, and, and playing, playing out the, each little item and, you know, expressing it in different ways. But it was a it was a beautiful exercise. Yeah, and the spaces were very interesting because, in a way, it's been what we've been doing for these ten years, which is you, you, and what the artists used to do when they re arrived in in these very houses with a lot of rooms. I mean, uh, I, I think it had like ten rooms that little house, and we opened up spaces and and we connected. We threw up one one of the staircases, so we. We've, we did a revision of the space through a contemporary approach, but within a traditional framework and material and materiality. No? So that was the interesting thing that I came with all the, 
of um, modern architecture, well, and contemporary the architecture, yeah, the volume, language. We think, you know, and then you put all the all the mat uh, materials that I didn't mm -hmm. have any clue about. So yeah. you, I think you were the first person, literally, in my life that told me about Tadelac, for example. And you were already telling me about Tadelac mm -hmm. at the time, or the stone, or so you had a yeah. lot of ideas from what you had learned from uh, working with your mother. Yeah, yeah, and I had a lot of ideas, and that that, that got together, but also like they had neglected the landscape and we were thinking at the same we we were like no we're gonna do the landscape not not <laughs> not not someone else no we are going to design the outs the outdoor and we're gonna do the decoration and we're gonna do the architecture we want it all no? that's why we call it more yeah. design because we yeah. want to do more than just a set of plans yeah nice. we wanted to transmit more than just like a plan and just you know for it to get lost in translations and good luck yeah. we want to get involved in curating every little material and formulating it and the alchemy behind it and uh and then, of course, the hardscapes, the vegetation, because we know enough about it, but it wasn't our expertise, but at least in a smaller project, it was really... Uh -huh. and, you know. and we were the first guys to use uh, uh, like uh, aerothermia in, in, in the village, which is like a high efficiency technology. So we used technology, yeah. which was no not consumption. normal. So yeah. we said no, no to gas oil boilers. Everybody was like, ah, oh, put a gas oil boiler. And we said, no way, yeah. uh, away from bo uh, boilers. That house doesn't have AC and it's never hot because we put a lot of insulation. Mm -hmm. uh, so we used a lot of, uh, we passive introduced system. passive systems and, and lime. And so we were already like saying, no, we want to put also technology, it had like all the, all the lighting, the dimming. I, want, I mean, yeah. we were telling the electricians that we want to dim and they were like, what? I mean, like, yes, yes, we want to be able to soften the light and, yeah. and we want to design the light integrated. And, and they were like, no, you're not going to buy, no, no, we're not going to buy appliances we're just gonna integrate everything so it was the beginning and we were already like okay we want to do houses which are traditional but they are like uh, deep they have layers of of depth of technology of craftsmanship of uh, uh, and timeless uh, yeah and timeless. beauty in the end of the day i mean mm. the way you want to flip it, it has to be beautiful yeah. because everything it functions if it's beautiful somehow the composition makes sense it's like the symmetry of a face sometimes you need imperfections to make it beautiful in a way the village is the result of the laws that it has no uh, so people many many times you see people complain and say, what is the result of the uh, legislation we have to think about the legislation and how to work uh, creatively uh, within that uh, environment yeah and honor the tradition and honor also yeah. the 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 heritage which is which you know then somehow it's almost like a, a subconscious way of working that you integrate all these different layers mm -hmm. in the process so when you're designing yeah you're thinking about the material but you're also integrating the law structures you you know the expectation of the client so there's, there's it's a big production where all these things are happening on different layers yeah that's definitely a strength of yours being local or having deep roots in Dea um you know gives you that contact with the town halls because i see you know architects come and have big ideas about what projects they could do in the village but then they come up against either the regulations the the lack of clarity in certain situations or just the un unknowns and i think that has deterred you know can deter people so i think that's definitely one of the strengths you guys had when you were working in a Cananita, when you came together i mean i don't know if more was before during or after the actual like concept you know um but did you know you were onto something quite special and it would turn out to what it is now did you have a feeling mm -hmm. I think we were at the uh, moment in which we both knew we don't want to have, uh, uh, no, we're not going to work any anymore in our lives for, some, for someone else. We want to build something for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we were already thinking about the company name, so the, uh, what, how do we want to be called, already thinking about the website, already thinking about the... So we were already like super focused on, okay, this is our time. You had been doing also f uh, um, Alex the Betak's house. Mm -hmm. And you had uh, done a fantastic job there, and and you had so clear vision of what you want, to, what the next steps for you were. And me too. I, I was like, okay, I want to take this. Uh, I mean, to summarize, yeah. the the reunion that it was a perfect marriage because we put together so many strengths that that made sense, and it, and it didn't have to be um, discussed. It kind of made sense, uh, and that's it. And it was always, it's always been a progressive um, development since. Uh, it, in fact, it just. 
it skyrocketed. I think many projects came out very quickly afterwards, and, and it was just a matter of uh, of moving fast enough. <laughs> we haven't really had the time really to 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 stop and think back too much. Actually, you know, it's been quite quite a roller coaster ride. Yeah, but but and also the fact that we didn't. I mean, although the first years were focused in in Daya and mainly in Daya, we always thought about. Uh, a Mediterranean architecture and even uh, um, uh, something which is, goes beyond the Mediterranean, which is uh, a certain approach to a practice of architecture and design, which is uh, present in uh, whenever we work here. But that's the, we apply in the same ethos in when we're doing in Ibiza, where, when we, uh, that, uh, that you know we've, uh, we've been working there also the last few years or now in, in Mykonos or other projects that may arise in, in other areas, in, in Catalonia, in, in Sicily, uh, even the ones in Bahamas. It was like, mm. okay, we take an approach to look at the way things were built over centuries. Uh, we extract whatever we think is still is valid and, and, and uh, has a, a, an added value and, 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 and beauty, and we incorporate uh, uh, um, other other technologies or other approaches which are foreign, mixing them together. So the the DNA of what we wanted to achieve would have worked whatever. It was it's more an approach to. Well, we're still doing it. I mean, yeah. we've been invited to do a project now in Exuma Island to do maybe the, potentially maybe a restaurant there on the, on the beach and and somehow it's not it's, it's not a challenge necessarily uh, of the vernacular because we know the vernacular typologies but it's how can we implement that lifestyle the in some way putting aside that uh, that obscene luxury and replacing it a bit more with the raw beauty of things you know something that is more intrinsic in value uh, of the place because when you go across the globe you want to feel you're there I love and that. you want to feel that you're with your feet in the sand and and and, and living it the, yeah life, the experience. life life experiences and that's something that you also taught me from the beginning which is houses need to be sexy you need to be let's not look at it like so like uh, from a conservative point of view this is the bedroom this is this there's a we talk uh, we establish a conversation with the clients about how they live how they how people how they, will live in these spaces yeah, how they live and and mm. and sometimes telling them no this is not the way you live here yeah. no yeah. you don't it's a form of yeah. education it's, yeah. you know it's, it's almost it's a two way we've learned and a we're lot. not saying yeah. always the only no. way you know but, okay, no. okay, but you've lived, yeah you've lived but, it yeah but, but you know, yeah, the Mediterranean has its kind of streak, has its kind of, uh, it's 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 slightly more informal, more relaxed. Uh, you know, it has its kind of, oh yeah, sepia background. And it's you based know? on cooking, on family, yeah. on getting on, together, yeah, yeah. drinking. <laughs> it lures you into a certain lifestyle, you know, yeah. and, and, and people, you know, sort of fall into it and enjoy that lifestyle. Definitely, we've seen that. If, so if you're invited to like Barbados and stuff, how do you? How do you get the sort of local material knowledge? Because obviously you've grown up here, so this comes more, more naturally to well, you. you. How do you get that? that? You, you have to investigate it yeah, yourself. But you know, you know that there you got the calcium carbonate kind of Coralina stone. Okay. Uh, you know that you have the husk of this kind of uh, tree trunk, and that's the kind of woods. But the sad truth is, in, on the on the islands, most of it is imported from Miami. That's yeah, the but then, then, yeah, it's true. But then yeah. there's something interesting in what you're saying because here, what we what we did is we started looking, I mean, if you start going back and thinking, what are the references of architecture that we we uh, like honestly admire mm -hmm. from Mallorca from the last 50 years? And there there are very few examples that we said, okay, this is this is really interesting. There, now, for example, nowadays there are, there are many uh, uh, comp uh, studios that I mm -hmm. really yeah, think are doing something interesting. Mm -hmm. but. I think there was a, a, a wrong idea of what luxury or uh, 60s construction was really bad. Uh, uh, they were like pff, cash flowing, not thinking about uh, things. They they had uh, detached themselves from local architecture. They were not using any uh, environmental conscious materials. They were not using anything which is was, yeah, was local. It, poor, it was poor architecture. It was, it was poor, cheap, poor, poor imported. Yeah. Or, or post-war, like you know, like England had to rebuild quick and post-war. Yeah, but even the Luxury. Buildings. They cheap. were doing like red marbles. Perhaps, yeah. uh, like it was this kind of luxury, which is not, yeah. I don't know where it belongs. So we looked at references from 200, 300 years ago, 150 years ago, like yeah. Saint Royan or places that you yeah. told me. Like, Timeless beauty, like yeah. uh, understated, um, an element of understatement and also humble and honest. 
because it's what you see is what you get, but it's also we wanted to wear beautifully in time. So we wanted that timelessness. In fact, I hope that when we do a project like this, that they don't in 20 years go, ah, those are out of fashion because those are timeless. Yeah. These tiles are reclaimed. Yes. This wood is reclaimed. This brass is just going to get nicer the more you touch it. It's natural. Uh, and, you know, and if we're using limes and old embedded um, um, burgundy stones from the 16th century, it's kind of timeless. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to have to come here and go, it's lost. I really it's lost don't like it, long. you know, yeah. but that's, you know, I hope, I hope that to be yeah, yeah. rare. That you know? be, that's a good, that's a good thing. You know, let's think about how they're going to perceive yeah. our designs in 50 years. I hope yeah. they, they see uh, our work like we see those works that we have. I think it's going to be a luxury yeah. in itself because raw materials are becoming scarce and more expensive. Mm -hmm. Importing things and we don't import hardly anything anymore. Like we're actually trying to produce everything locally mm -hmm. or nationally as much as we can, which, which is, yeah. which is an added value now, the times we're living in, given the, global climate but but most of these woods are actually uh local woods from the north of spain well so, i think that definitely works on two fronts i mean you're supporting local economy um jobs mm -hmm. and actually that's the demand of the people that we see coming in you know high-end demand in both Dea, i beat the along this coast um they want to know that they're getting local you know mm -hmm. product and also like you i think you touched on before that reconnecting them to, to, the, to place. the place because you know place. people exactly. just come into these places yeah. disconnect you don't want to be in dubai or hong kong or be in a, a generic place that could be anything you want to eat food from here yeah. you want to tap into the nature here and, 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 and feel the sea here you want to smell the pines and normally it's people who also enjoy the all year round uh, some 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 of our clients prefer even the non uh, off season, uh, uh, whether it's in September, October, or it's, more, and uh, more. more and more. So mm. they enjoy like the quietness. Of, Winter's of, a new summer. Yeah, I sure. agree. I've been saying it's it for years. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, we think winter tourism. Yeah. Could, could we get out of here in August. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. And I think what you guys do, and I know it's what you know, when we look at it all and get quite overwhelmed at times with it, we look at well, what can we do? It's bringing people together. It's trying to you know make sure the locals have a voice to the people, the new people coming in. So whether that's with our events or whether that's um, with our blog and telling stories and and as much as we can and i know that you've always done that when i you know whenever we've engaged a client together and you you know i know that they're going to get taken care of much beyond just the architecture you're introducing them to people um you know you're telling yeah. them your favorite i mean spots. it's it's also where does the architecture architecture and the project transcend beyond just the object and it kind of introduces um again this this context well with the beauty that you have around you it also engages uh, different interactions among people and I mean, there's more that goes beyond. I mean, we hope to think that it will it will, it will bring out certain emotions and, and other feelings past just um, the breeze blocks and the, and the volume, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's like the, the one day one client showed me the contract and said, like, years after. And I said, what are you doing? He said, yeah, I want to see why you still come into my house three years later. <laughs> into, I mean, is this in my contract that you can still come to my house? I, my Drinking drink my, my wine, <laughs> eat my olives, yeah. hang out with my wife. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, no, but it's true. It's like um, we are proud of what, of extending the, the experience because we really feel that creating a home. I mean, it's not doing like an office. You're creating, I mean, sometimes we've seen families go through with their kids for, since they are two until they are already nine, 10, some of them 12. So we've gone through a period of their lives, which is very unique and important. So yeah, it's a very, very intimate tough. relationship. There is an intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. we've seen breakups, we've seen uh, marriages, we've seen uh, people going through uh, illness, mm -hmm. uh, we've seen people th going through bankruptcy and then people going really uh, well. So we've seen all the uh, uh, things of life in, in, in a short term, in, in 10 years concentrated. So we created bond, some bonds which are very powerful. Uh, and, and, and I'd say most of our clients have become very good friends actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it's such a, a strong, intense process, the whole yeah. the energy and the intensity that goes into developing something so personal. Mm -hmm. um, it usually evolves into a very good friendship, yeah. which is a beautiful thing, actually. Yeah, and because we always uh, uh, deliver on time and on budget. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's your slogan. Yeah. 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 It's okay if it costs yeah. a little more. It takes a little longer yeah. as long as the end result is golden. Yeah. Because yeah. then it will never be forgotten. Yeah. I always say that's the most important thing. If you're if you're late and overpriced and it's shite, then you're really fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> exactly, a, a, a couple of years down the line, it will see, seem a distant memory that yeah. the, that you overran. People will not remember months, the months. the last scene of the movie is what has to be remembered. Has to be grand. Has to be fantastic. Yeah. You know, if no, it's not relevant. 
Yeah. Where did that come from? You, you, obviously, you guys said you started in 2011. You kind of come with the technical side of things. And where, we, where, where, where did that all come from? Well, funny you mention it, because I always used to just draw as a yeah, kid. I was a drawer, and I never stopped drawing. So then I went to a Bachelor of Arts, and I did a, whole, I did a drawing um, bachelor. So the drawing never stopped for me, but it was, in, in essence, drawing three-dimensional spaces without really having it in front of me, imagining space. So maybe one of my attributes is, is visualizing a space before it's there. Mm -hmm. So talking people through that is, uh, is, comes easy to me. Yeah, I remember you telling me when in the first year, like, no, I lived there. Yeah, and I lived on that <laughs> yes. one, and I lived on that one. And so you went through so many houses, like, in a... And then I added another 20, 30 houses, yeah. renting another 40 until I could afford getting one myself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you know every house in there, basically. <laughs> yes. We lived in some beautiful old old houses. I, I think your vision of architecture, when I when I met you, and still, it's the vision of still of a kid, which is having fun in a house. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. true. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, with, it's saying this with all the respect, and, and I think that that's an immense value because you don't have, you're not uh, uh, like overwhelmed by the constraints of yeah. uh, of having gone through um, a normal education of architecture. And that I have him to thank for. <laughs> no, <laughs> to take the burden of all the technical, but yes, yes. yes. No, it's but free thinking. Way. He allowed me to think freely in a yeah. way like a kid playing and drawing freely. Which is a, a but it's a not huge it's thing. not only that I think you you're much more aware of that than just that but it's a, it's like a reduction and it's like in a way it's like I was thinking the other day we we are like a jazz band we have created us you know it's true we have created a some standards in which we we are we uh, like practice 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 but then we allow. Uh, freestyle. We, uh, freestyle and yeah. that, and that's where I think uh, where magic comes from it's like creating and allowing that freestyle thinking uh, within uh, a certain uh, structure that we have created together mm -hmm. and and each house is different and I'm and we're okay yeah and, and now we have the more decor which is an in interiors where we started fabricating a lot of the the upholstery the textiles the lighting the furniture and that's a whole new a whole new arena which we can talk about in the future but that's so eventually you you know you you have that base you improvise over it and you see your performance like from outside almost like uh, you extrapolate yourself and you see your performance you see how you can improve your situation you go well you know we give a house and a property in, and then sometimes it gets littered with the wrong stuff and it, and it destroys the flow or the magic of the space so we started producing our own items and objects and glassware and hardware and cutlery and and the poster, you know, textile elements and and chairs and tables and lighting. You know, we start producing our own collections because it was a way of embroidering the property with jewelry that made sense. It was part of the the, the inert part of the prop, of project. So that was an evolution of of all more design as well, of implementing all these little details. Because we used to do it before, but of course, the more we grow, you have to also have a more specialized eye on on of things, and. Going into the future, I mean, there's there's so many other ways that we could evolve and you know and and, and improve. So the other day we 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 put like a, an advertisement about because we were looking for someone to come to the office, and there were hundreds of applicants willing to come to this little village uh, to work for us. And I was like, yeah, wow, it's everywhere. great from everywhere in the world, and that's nice. That's something that uh, it's it's a legacy that I think it's uh, it's so so I think. What the village needs, going back to, I think it's uh, we need your, uh, um, um, like yourselves, like companies uh, that can benefit from being in a in a small village. Which with the technology now you can work from here easily. You can work. I mean, we are working in projects everywhere, from a little village in the Mediterranean, and and we and through Instagram, through websites, we get to uh, know people, and, and people come to know us. So. It's no longer an isolated place, and it's. Uh, I think we have to think about that and and take it further, no? Um, and that's what I think the village uh, should. The way in which the village can evolve and don't become just a dead one uh, with houses which are empty throughout the year. I think it's a year thing that it can be done. So the more that the, the clientele, the outsiders can come and spend in the community, the more they nourish it, and the more that it gives back. Mm -hmm. So the richer it becomes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's something with the pandemic has been so, I mean, Absolutely. talking back, I mean, thinking about the last two years, I just see positive things mm -hmm. in the, in the, in, I mean, of course, there were a lot of negatives, but, but in a way, there is a lot of positiveness about the, we had, we have, we thought about what 
how important local is, uh, that we can work in a different way, and that we can uh, go through this uh, difficult time, but coming back uh, stronger. The island cannot be so dependent on, on fossil fuels, on, on gas. So but we have to rethink food. Yeah, or important yeah. food. Like you know, we have, we have to have go up to a certain degree. We have to be self-sufficient. No? Mm. That was always a dream of Mallorca: how to become self-sufficient and greener. You know, and, yeah, and that, that's that's a real thing that this island should strive to on a governance level and even locally is to, to become more sustainable in, in the term of not having to import food, fuel, you know, energy. Architecture in Daya comes from you basically did a hole. Whatever you you found on the hole uh, was your, your, your walls. The, the stones went on the walls with lime mixed with mortar. They created like a mortar and breathable they, walls. Yeah. And the trees that they had around, they used for the, for the roofs. That was it. It was the, the, it was the cheapest. It's not that the, it, no, they were not thinking, oh, we're going to do a stone architecture. No, they you, did, you they did yeah. what they had. Well, yeah. Like, and they've done the same in Ibiza. It's different because they've used Sabina. Yeah. They because used instead the of, here they had the, the pine. For yes. The, for the insulation yeah. and the roofing. So yeah. in, in, in Greece, they use uh, a, a slightly different one because they have other other resources, but it's also always things that they have nearby, yeah. uh, and that's what it, what became vernacular. But vernacular, like vernacular food, it's it's very it's very it uses everything. Yeah. So with the potato, like we, we were talking today about the potato peels to do. Yeah, interesting. Uh, uh, to it's uh, a binder. It's a binder. It's a binder uh, for, for for the clay. For the clay. So they for the clay yeah. mortars because we're yes. start working with clay mortars now, but they use potato peels as a binder. Yeah. As, as a glue yeah. to put it together you know it's fascinating stuff mm -hmm. you know this this is where it gets very interesting when you yes. when you start yeah yeah so it's uh that's the that's what we love about thinking about how they did things in the past because normally uh, uh there was an architect who told me the other day something which was incredible he told me vernacular architecture is the result of a lot of uh failures they failed, failed, failed. So whatever was left, it was yeah. the result of all the things that went wrong until the, something went, went right. Yeah. So in the end, over centuries, oh, that fell, Try that fell, that yeah. fell. Yeah. Oh, that did. That well, works. Yeah, that yeah, works. Yeah, yeah. There's no keep worse back than that. So <laughs> keep doing that. So we got to do this. <laughs> that's good. Well, so, yeah, we have, we, we like, have to become nerds. Matter. It's like, yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter. You go on, you go on. So, okay, the, we need, I mean, the, these pine trees, uh, over certain years, they, they have to do something. So they used to start doing oil all the termites so we use the the same oil we use for the for the machines uh, they start an apply and that's what the this black beams that something you see in, in architecture here it, it was because they, they had the problem with the termites so they had to do the yeah. the oil yeah i mean everything has a reason yeah, yeah. it's not by accident it's know? not it becomes yeah. an aesthetic later yeah. Mm -hmm. So it became and a point of reference. But uh, at first, it was just, uh, or the, the, the wood is because they didn't, they didn't saw it. It was like they, they basically chopped the tree and they used the, the beams like that. It was not, it becomes an aesthetic. So now, sometimes we are like, okay, we have to be careful because we are, we want to, we don't want just to replicate an aesthetic. Yeah. We just, we need to be conscious that today is, we do the things differently, no? But in a way, we want to be sense, uh, I mean, we want to keep that with the way that they felt material, ma materials, no? Yeah. Um, well, and, the origin, yeah. uh, the origins of, of all things are usually the originals and the cliches, but they're usually right. Yeah. So they're a great point of reference to start from. And then you can see how uses have changed and how you can add to it and, and, and almost like make it useful because it has to be functional as well, you know? I mean, we're becoming more and more functional actually in our design of architecture yeah. as well, noticeably. And, or for yeah. example, wood, like yeah. people say, like, why, why do you love, uh, love reclaimed wood? To begin with, because it has moved all the, all, as much as it had to move, and it's, 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 it's always not moving yeah, anywhere. So, so yes. it's, it's already stable. So yeah. when you buy new wood, it, it starts, I mean, moving and changing, but this wood has, I mean, for example, it's basically it's been 50 years uh, or something like that already uh, fixed. So you buy something that it's reached a point in which it's in equilibrium. You know? It's like when you meet I mean, for, for instance, these yeah. stone inserts are not here for mistake. It's to put hot pots when you're cooking yeah. on and, the hot and to things. cut. And yeah. so it doesn't get stained so easily. Here's for the for oils and herbs, you know. All the plates are handmade by locals over here, you know, the backsplash of reclaimed tiles is so that you have longevity in the kitchen. You don't have to go, oh my God, all the wear and tear, let's redo the whole kitchen again. Because yeah. you just don't see the mess. Yeah. So 
things were designed in a way that it, it should be practical, with functional. Intention. We know in our own kitchens how annoyed we get or when things look like shit after a year, you have to repaint, you have to redo. So yeah. we don't want that. We want things to last like the old Mercedes Benz before the 80s, you know, yeah. like longevity. Um, I think that's a, yeah, a really cool evolution and I'm, I'm most excited about with you guys and it's really coming uh, more and more and this is a house that was, I don't know if it was the first example of that or, or one of them, but the more decor, which you touched on earlier, um, I think that's super exciting. You know, tell me a bit more about that. It's with your beautiful partner today. Yeah, I mean, we, the, the first revision of this house as the flow was off. So we, we closed the opening to the kitchen. You know, we, we, con we consolidated this area. We, we opened up the porch and connected and closed it and connected it here. So it was a, a flow as well to the living room, but it all communicates visually and verbally almost, you know, in a way that you're in a space. And, and, and we, we almost layered from that point of, of structural layouts and then went into the meta reality but of course wherever you put the house upside down and shake it whatever you know stays solid is more the architectural side but then we had to extend beyond that into all these little objects and bits and pieces that are essential as we said earlier it is really the jewelry that makes the place and it's the spirit of the environment because it's hand blown glass it's ceramics it's wooden handle cutlery if it's you know, if it's the linen upholstery on the curtains, if it's there's so many little details, or the lighting that are like hand woven kind of rope pieces inspired by the seventies Danish designs, or you know, the table the chairs that are we woven are ropes, which are made by artisans here, which, you know, I think it's something like eighty linear meters or more, or no, actually two hundred and fifty linear meters of rope in one chair. Wow. It's a real labor, you know? Yeah. So it's it's all these little pieces of craft, of manuality, that extend the expression of the project that makes it so interesting for us now to... Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I guess, we are always you know, on the... On there is, there's an interesting thing because we... Uh, about the boundary between craftsmanship and art and the creation and, and design. And, yeah. and it's a fine line in which we are navigating. Uh, and, and we are, the core also, it's interesting because we, 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 we have collaborations a lot with now uh, art galleries uh, mm -hmm. to introduce art, something that, that already was present in, in, in Deia. When we grew up, the artists had art on the, on the walls. And I think, uh, we are recovering uh, uh, that um, approach to have art in the walls on, on the and at the same time uh, craftsmanship because we are we have a lot of people around us which uh, create pieces for us and again it's like the fine line between whether this is a piece of art or whether it's uh, yeah. uh, at the other day we were yeah, I was in it's, it's tricky. yeah it's tricky but it's, it's tricky. interesting and, yeah. and maybe there is no we don't have to position ourselves it's no, no. whoever wants to decide. I mean they're very they're very humble most of the artisans yeah. like you're the creator of the design I'm just the mirror executor but we're like no you're an artist you know but of course the, the moment uh, our craftsman becomes an artisan is when the prices go through the roof too. So you're always trying to keep it in wax so it's accessible. So it's actually we can yeah. promote the product and we can start to 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 make it, yeah, somehow friendly and, and, and accessible to it financially as well. You know, but um, I've, I've definitely said that a few times when I speak to people and I'm describing like your houses. It's like it's more than a house. It is like a piece of art. Like I do think it stands on its own as like a piece of art, and you feel it and you experience a sensation of feeling when you go in. And, and I, I've seen the reaction, you know, many times. For and then I agree. It's not just a, a function or a, or it's like what's the difference between this and and and, and i mean uh, there is a certain uh, amount of of uh uh, not just craftsmanship, but uh, uh, the way in which the the guy decides to uh, finish it up and think that it's 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 just a feeling. It's, it's full of feelings. It's, it's very a emotional. Feeling. It's emotional. Well, it's I mean, like, to, to, yeah. to describe that, we built this house during the lockdown. The clients couldn't come to visit the site during the making, and when they came in on the delivery of the house, they just cried. They literally broke out in tears. It went so beyond their expectation, and they felt so much. Uh, love and appreciation that they literally just broke out in tears and that was amazing I mean and I know they looking... still appreciate it like uh, day by day and just and it's funny that we're sitting here because the guy uh, does a lot of uh, restaurants yes. in, in the UK yeah, he's tons. I mean we were like how can we tell this guy <laughs> I mean he does uh, hundreds of restaurants yeah. really high-end restaurants yeah, so, own, uh, so but still he's like wow I love this kitchen I'm like <laughs> 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 you know <kid>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Uh, yes. But for example, you, you you think about this, oh, and it's not only about the design. We've we've talked about. I mean, kitchens have always been like the center right. of many of our projects, like the place where I mean, we uh, grew up with families, and yeah. we know that everything takes yeah. place in there. Yeah, yeah. so Homework, there's food, yeah. breakfast, fights, so making the, up. Yeah. <clears throat> so the love way here, yeah, the way you move in a kitchen, like uh, the distance between. So we're always thinking about the height, the height, the uh, so yeah, the proportions, the proportions, the, the this distance be between here and here. Uh, the, what's and the that flow? The, and that the counter flows directly yeah. into the sink, so you can rinse things off and it goes straight into the dishwasher. Yeah. And there's no, you can swipe the mess in, you know. Yeah. Little things. We, we we definitely get a head around the detail. Mm -hmm. yes, um, but that's because you we like cooking a lot. Yeah. That's we like we, we love cooking. We love uh, eating. Both and I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's true. I mean, we love to cook, and and and. I literally, my house, I think, is the place where I spend most of my time, free time, and doing a, creati a creative thing. It's probably the, the kitchen. Yeah, we were all foodies, yeah. but I have to say, 90% of the populace loves food. Yeah. And they love, and life evolves around the kitchen. You know, it's, it's the... It's for sure the heart. That's why this house has the kitchen positioned in the most strategic point. But that's not true because, for example, you in New York or in London, they are doing more and more houses in which the yeah. the, the kitchen is reduced to the minimum because yeah. people do take away food. Yeah, they don't in even a, put in kitchens a way, actually. In sometimes we would end up doing a house which is just a kitchen, mm. a kitchen with beds. <laughs> that could no. be kind of cool. No, but it's true. I mean, most of I get like, it. For example, if you think about the projects in Son Ruyan, the 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 art, I mean, the object that articulates all the building is the is the kitchen. It's, the kitchen. it's where it's where everybody has to go through. So if, it's a kitchen in which if you had to build the olivar and you had to resolve a house within one small volume of say 50 square meters, you'd probably do a grand kitchen dining with a fireplace, couch, living room, chill out, and a little cave bed in a bathroom that's public. But the but the 90 percent or 70 percent of the occupation would be the kitchen, living, dining kind of. Cluster, yeah, you know? that's certainly how we. So grew that's up. kind of like if you if you go from the small and you blow it up, you're kind of going, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree there. Yeah, mm. this house where we are now, like this was the perfect example of luxury houses in which the kitchen was closed because the, they used to have people used to have people working for them and and they they didn't even cook, so they had some uh, caretakers and they would prepare the food and then they would bring out the food yeah. to the uh, to the dining room. Now. People want to live in a different way. They want an open kitchen. Sometimes they even have cooks here, but they have a cook they, which they they found on Instagram, which comes here for a day. And it's on an open the, display. It's an open That's display, and you're here with him. They had remember in, yeah. in summer there was a guy cooking amazing food here. They had found they found him through I don't know Instagram, or whatever. They're happy to expose. They they they. This is a beautiful kitchen. And it was part of dinner, so it was part of uh, he was preparing food. We were having like 10, 12 people there, so it was an experience which was amazing. Or or so it's a different way of of using the space and the and the function so i think in the in the future in hotels we're going to do the same we want to look at the way people use the spaces and much more and, experience based yeah, experiential much, yeah. and the present yeah not hiding it all and tucking yeah. it away no more white gloves why like people yeah. want to get their hands dirty yeah that's a that's want to, want to live, uh, experience things and that's the power of uh, power of architecture, like you say. I mean, in those common spaces, you know, is it a common table that creates a chance encounter? You know, you're trying to create, like, you know, people moving through the space in a different way. Yeah, that's make it tactile, make it beautiful, make it that people want to touch it and get involved. Yeah, and they should you know? wake don't, up. Don't make you remove like it's a vitrine and, you know, get messy, get yeah. into it. Yeah. I've been super excited from the day we f I first saw your projects. We worked together, your enthusiasm, your... Incredible expertise and reassurance and, you know, uh, clarity um, from, from the beginning. And so up to this point, it's been exciting. And I'm, I would say even more excited about what's to come from seeing your projects now and how they've involved and Tilly's involved. Oh, we're maturing. Now we're just coming to our skin. And Come on, is, this is our time. And that's what's <laughs> interesting. I think we're both really coming into our, you know, full expression. Thanks, Thanks guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Lovely to speak to you guys.